Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Porn Show. I'm your host, Robert. All right, CFL week three. My first two weeks have been just like the Hamilton Tiger Cats' first two weeks. Not good, not great. Um, two and six for the year to date against the win loss, two and six against the spread, one and three in both weeks. And three and five on the over under. I was one and three in week one. Um, so two and two in week two. Overall, I'm seven for 17. Yeah, not great. Um, you know what? That's what makes it fun because I'm not great. I'm not perfect. I think I'm perfect, but I'm not. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been a rough two weeks, but you know what? Again, I feel like the Hamilton Tiger Cats right now. Starting season 0 and 2, and people had, people were predicting them to go undefeated this year. It's crazy. Um, some of our top performers year to date, we have Michael O'Reilly from BC, 43 for 50, 43 for 57, 545 yards, one touchdown, 75.4% completion ratio, which is great. Cody Fajita, or uh, Fajordo, or Fajordo, I believe it's Fajordo, there's the Saskatchewan QB, he's 45 for 60, with one interception, 452 yards, 75% completion ratio, four touchdowns. Now, when it comes to the efficiency rating, the QB rating, um, Vernon Adams for Montreal, 13 for 21, 211 yards. Again, it's only one, one game. 127.3% QB rating with two touchdowns. Cody, Cody Fajardo, again, he's right there with the efficiency 111.2. We know his stats. We know he's great. We know Saskatchewan is 2-0. We know that they may be this year's Hamilton Tiger Cats. Could Saskatchewan go undefeated? Throw that one out there. Just like I said in week one and week two, hashtag expect the unexpected. The 2021 CFL season. Most receptions, Kenny Lawler, Kenny Lawler, Winnipeg, 14 for 168, two touchdowns. We have four receivers tied with 13 catches. Most yards, Lucky Whitehead. From BC, 244 yards on 11 catches, one TD. Brian Burnham, again, BC, 11 for 213, one touchdown. On the rushing side, James Wilder out of Edmonton, 30 for 174 in the year. Why? That man has not got more catches. He does not, he needs to be touching the ball more than 30 times in two games. Come on now. He needs to be touching the ball 30 times a game, receiving. If you're new to CFL, he's kind of like the Marshall Falk out of the CFL. Of the CFL. He's, a, I mean, he's a double threat. But you got you to use him in that way. Um, Brandon Alvera, Winnipeg, thirty-five for one fifty-five. Best at most, the best average yards per carry with at least ten attempts. So several guys got one attempt. I'm not counting those. With at least ten attempts, Cody Fajardo, Cody Fajita. Out of Saskatchewan, he's got 12 carries, 92 yards, 7.7 average. What can't he do, right? Everything but catch the ball. Uh, John White of Toronto, 21 for 139, 6.6. Most offensive plays year to date, Winnipeg, 155. Most yards, BC, 818. Most points, Saskatchewan, 155. On the few side, fewest plays, Ottawa, 660. That's only one game. Is that, is that two games? That's only one game. Hamilton is the fewest with the two games, the 134. Fewest yards, Ottawa 94 with the two ones with two games, 437 by Hamilton. Fewest points, Ottawa with 10. Uh, hold on. Take that back. Ottawa with 16, my bad. Hamilton with two games with 13. Normally, I'd be going over my fantasy lineup because I've been doing fantasy on CFL website. I forgot to write the players down. Um, so, I'm in the official Lennox Spinners League. I'm 34th overall um, out of 82. I've got 123.4 points. The leader currently has 198 points. Um, if you look down in the description, I will have my team listed there as well. I forgot to write it down for the video. So, let's get to the games. Game 1. Edmonton Elks 0-2. They had a close loss to Ottawa 16-12. Then they lost to Montreal 
30 to 13. The Elks are looking good this year. They do have eight players on the injury list. Um, they have scored a total of 391 yards. While BC, the Lions are 1-1. One one. They did almost came back and won against Saskatchewan 33-29 in Week 1. They beat Calgary 15-9 in Week 2. They do have 10 players on the injury list. They have scored 434 yards. They have gained 435 yards of offense this season. Current line of the game is the home team BC favored by four and a half with a 46 and a half over under. Edmonton is doing nothing for me to pick them. So I'm picking BC to win straight up. Based on what Edmonton has done, that just crept low, they loaded against Montreal. Even though the Alouettes appeared to be a good team, but was Edmonton that bad? So we got to figure that one out. Um, I am actually giving BC the four and a half to cover. And I'm actually taking over on the 46 and a half. I think there could be some points put up here based on what BC gave up to Saskatchewan in week one. So I got BC winning, covering the four and a half, and over on the 46 and a half. Next up with the Montreal Alouettes, 1 0. What a game they had against Edmonton, 30 to 13. Good for them. They had week week one by week, and now they got the momentum from winning week two, going into week three against the Stampeders. Calgary is 0 and 2, three point heartbreaking loss to Toronto. Then they had that 15 to 9 loss to BC last week. These teams so far, which is weird to say, two games for Calgary, one game for Montreal, are close until the Arch of the season. Montreal has 365 yards total, and Calgary is 355. Calgary is actually favored by two at home. How? I don't understand that line whatsoever. I think it's because of the injuries, and I think since the line has changed, because that's the initial line that came out, and the line has changed, and I believe Montreal is favored by two. Um, I've got the Alouettes winning, covering that two, and under on the 45 and a half. Um, next up, we have a rematch from week two. We have this one in Toronto. We have the 2 0 Winnipeg Blue Bombers versus the 1 1 Toronto Argonauts. Um, the Blue Bombers won versus Hamilton 19 6 in week one. Toronto won against Calgary 23 20 in week one. Last week, we know Winnipeg won 20 7 versus Toronto. Toronto has lots of injuries. Uh, we know that McLeod, uh, Bethel Thompson got benched. And then, of course, his backup didn't do well. Of course, when you draft him for your fantasy quarterback and he gets benched, it doesn't help your team any. Yeah, it happened, it happened to this guy. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't fun. Um, Winnipeg is actually favored by seven here based on last, last week's game. Yeah, they're going to win. So I got Winnipeg winning, covering at seven, over under a 43 and a half. I don't know why it's so high based on last week's score, based on what Winnipeg has done this year. 25 points in week one, 27 points in week two total. Um, now, Calgary, or Toronto, I mean, 43 and 27. So I mean, having a 43 and a half point line, definitely going under on that one. And last but not least, we have the Ottawa Red Blacks 1 0 versus the 2 0 Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I think the schedule makers hurt Ottawa here. They came out of the gate good, winning versus Edmonton 16 to 12, then they had a bye week. That bye week can definitely kill your momentum there. While Saskatchewan beat BC 33 29, then beat Hamilton 30 to 8. They're flying high. 347 points total in both weeks. Ottawa, 127 yards in their one game. It, but what is so weird to me on this one here is the line. Saskatchewan, 11 and a half. I, I don't quite get that based on unless they think that Edmonton is a bad, bad team. Ottawa barely beat them by four. Saskatchewan smoked Hamilton 20 by 22. Be the only thing I could think of why they would make a line like that with over under 46 and a half. So I'm picking Saskatchewan to win. 
I got Ottawa covering that 11 and a half. I'm thinking under on that 46 and a half. I think it's going to be a pretty close game. I think it's going to be probably six point difference. Um, I'm not even going to try to predict the score. I'm not good at that at all. So we have BC beating Edmonton. And I'm going to recap everything here real quick. BC beating Edmonton. <coughs> BC covering the four and a half over on the 46 and a half. Montreal beating Calgary. Montreal favorite by two, covering under on the 45 and a half. Winnipeg moving to 3 0, beating Toronto. Winnipeg covering the seven, under on the 43 and a half. And then Saskatchewan beating Ottawa, but Ottawa covering the 11 and a half, and under on the 46 and a half. Saskatchewan, Winnipeg will both be 2 0, 3 0 after week three. Make sure you look down below for my fantasy lineup. Again, I forgot to write it down to put it in the video. I'll put it down in the description for you. As always, please subscribe to the channel. Please follow me on Twitter at Rob Sports Show. Right here on YouTube at It's Robert Sports Show. But as always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. Don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader in sports town content.